Well, welcome everybody, and we're so excited to have you here. Um, we have Lydia Hurlbut from Filmmakers Academy, the CEO from Filmmakers Academy here with us this evening. Uh, so you think you are indestructible, uh, combating stress for health and success. That's our topic for tonight. Lydia is the CEO of Filmmakers Academy. Uh, her varied career as a forensic RN, certified life coach, and Reiki practitioner uh, has given her a unique perspective of what can help filmmakers succeed. Uh, she brings knowledge of brain physiology and a recognition of the power of resilience and fearlessness to create success for filmmakers. Uh, in addition, 35 years of marriage to Shane Hurlbutt uh, has given Lydia an insider's perspective on the challenges busy filmmakers face every day. So welcome, Lydia. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. Um, what I would like to say to everybody is, please... I want this to be as valuable for you um, as possible. And the way that that happens is if you participate. So we're going to try to do a few exercises. Please feel free to ask questions in the chat. I'm going to take those at the end um, just so we can get through the bulk of the material. So as Wendy said, I started out as a nurse, just a little teeny bit about me, and I then became a life coach. After that, I did a little bit of forensics and a little death investigation. I was going to join the FBI. My career has been varied, and through it all has been a lot of twists and turns, which can be very stressful. And starting in 2009, I actually um, became a CEO for the first time and started my own business, and that involved a lot of stress. And so what I'm doing now is I am running the Filmmakers Academy, and I love filmmakers. I've been married to one for 35 years, Shane Hurlbut, who is you know part of the Academy and also the ASC. I have two amazing kids, and we raise those together. And I've run a business since 09. So that's a little bit about me. I also love dogs and I love being out in nature and yoga. So there you go. Um, what I want to talk to you most about and where I want to start in the stress discussion is that Eckhart Tolle has a great quote saying that stress is wanting something to be the way that it isn't. And the reason that I am pointing this out to all of you is that I think we create a lot of our own stress and we don't even realize that we're doing it by the way that we react to things. And so part of what I wanna get into today is your unique stress as a filmmaker. And because filmmaking is unlike any job out there and every filmmaker has I would say some similar stresses, but a lot of unique stresses. So let's look at those really quickly. Um, the first one are the crazy hours and, you know, constantly shifting schedules, tight deadlines, always asked to do the impossible, inconsistent work, which, as you all pointed out, is very stressful from the financial stress part. Um, multiple projects going at once, so it's kind of feast or famine, depending on, you know, all the jobs seem to try to book in at the exact same time. And you don't want to let anybody down, so that's very, very stressful. Um, the other is sporadic paychecks, constantly just shifting and changing hours, whoops. And then lastly, um, you're adding on all the demands of personal, you know, being in relationship with your family, trying to juggle a relationship maybe with a spouse or a, a boyfriend or girlfriend. It's an awful lot, just because the baseline of stress for filmmakers is so significant. So what do you do when you're under this extreme amount of stress and why why should you why does it matter why should you worry about it i really became interested in this topic in 2006 
And that was a very stressful year for our family personally. And I'll tell you, Shane felt like this uh, during that year. So just to break it down a little bit, Shane was shooting uh, We Are Marshall, and he was with McGee, and, you know, it was obviously a very uh, amazing movie, but, but also very stressful to make because of the loss of life involved, you know, during that plane crash. So all of a sudden, Shane's dad, Ron Hurlbut, became very, very sick with pancreatitis and he was hospitalized and Shane went to production and said, oh my gosh, I've got to go. You know, my mom doesn't think my dad's going to make it. And he went from West Virginia to upstate New York to see his dad in the ICU. Well, thankfully that year, you know, his dad pulled through and things went really, really well. Well, not even a month later, I came down with viral spinal meningitis. And so Shane went back to the producers and said, oh, my gosh, can, you know, can I go home to be with my wife? And they said no, that he had used up his one, you know, emergency on the film and he was not allowed to. So thankfully, we had a lot of great family support. We had friends coming in and living with us. And and I'm just so grateful for my network. But you can see that the stress based on that year was really significant. And I think filmmakers a lot of times are left with an impossible choice where it feels as though you can't win. You know, you've got to let somebody down. And I think it's really navigating how to do that without beating yourself up. And that's really why we're here today. So... We're in the month of February, and how do you find any time for yourself? Already the year is just flying by, and what do you do? You start off January, we have amazing goals. We're like, yeah, this is going to be a great year. We usually build our goals a little bit too big, and what happens? We commit more to physical fitness, and then we start eating healthier. We all of a sudden try to plan all these fun activities, get together with friends. We emotionally connect better in our relationships, you know, feel like our mental health is on track, and, you know, maybe we get a new book or we're journaling. We make time to go to church or or find some spiritual connection. And then all of a sudden, here we are, February 8th today, and poof, it kind of goes out the window, right? And it's very disappointing because you're frustrated and you don't really, at least for a lot of people that I talk to that that are honest and vulnerable with me to share, how do you get yourself back on track and how do you figure out a routine that is really sticky and that you're going to, to stick to? So um, let's talk a little bit about the impact of stress on the brain. And I promise not to make this painful, but you really need to understand what's going on and how it impacts your body. So stress is very significant. And what makes it significant is the intensity and the length of the stress. So our bodies are designed with um, to have a stress response come in at the amygdala And then it's meant to be determined like, okay, emotionally that's bad. Oh my gosh, I'm going to activate the short-term stress response. And the key to stress is that it's meant to be short-term so that our bodies react. And then all of a sudden they have a down time where they can just reset and relax. So when stress activates from the amygdala, it goes to the hippocampus in your brain. And then we have things like adrenaline and cortisol being produced, the main stress hormone from the adrenals. And, you know, it's we're off to the races, right? So that your blood volume's increasing, you your muscles are getting ready to run, your digestion's going down because that's not important right now, more glucose is being released. All of those things happen automatically in the body. And what's amazing about our brains is they're like giant supercomputers and they do all of this very, very efficiently. So um, where we get into trouble is when this mechanism doesn't shut off and we have constant stress. 
so that that HPA axis keeps getting activated and activated and activated. And then we start to feel anxiety and overload, maybe a little bit of depression. We get all of a sudden digestive problems. We might have recurrent headaches, muscle tension where your ears are in your shoulders, and high blood pressure. We could even have a heart attack or a stroke just because, again, chronic stress is so debilitating for the body. And the brain will just keep firing. It'll just keep going because that's what it was, it's programmed itself to do, right? Like, oh my gosh, another stressor, another stressor. Sleep problems, which we'll get into a little later, weight gain, memory issues. And this is a very bad situation. And the reason that it is, is because it sets us up for continued failure. So what happens in the brain is that we rewire with neuroplasticity for reactivity. And what happens then is it is very difficult to get out of that loop because when you're depressed, you don't want to exercise so much. When you're not feeling well, you're not working optimally. And so we really at all costs want to stay away from this chronic stress response because it is so debilitating, not only to our physical and mental health, but to also our success and future work. Okay, so... First exercise, I want you to grab a notebook and a pen. And I I would love for you to write five things that are really irritating you right now. And there's something very magical about writing it down. I mean, you can type it into your phone, whatever you want to do. But the key here is to really look at if it's in your control or out of your control because that really matters. That allows our brains to feel like, wow, we're really getting some control over our own level of stress. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. One's a really, really funny one. Um, And this has to do with running late. So Shane, Shane was on Into the Badlands and he put in this plantation that he was supposed to go to into his ways in the morning. And, and if you know my husband and every filmmaker I know, 15 to 30 minutes early to set is on time. So he looked at the ways, tons of time to get there. And he's driving and he's like, wow, right, ways must be rerouting me a, a different way, right? Because I'm not used to this way to get to the plantation. And he ends up at the Mississippi River with a bunch of cars trying to get on a ferry to cross. Okay. <laughs> and what happened in that particular situation, Shane was an hour late to set. And he didn't realize that Waze had automatically programmed boats and ferries and everything into the routing. So obviously, that was beyond his control because he didn't realize that that would happen in the Waze. But you can imagine the stress level there being an hour late to set. Okay, lack of preparation you could be prepared and do everything and all of a sudden have a hard drive that you're given that's corrupt. There's so many things that could be out of your control in terms of preparation. And as you're making your list, just write if it's C within your control so that you can kind of visualize that. A generator going down, weather events happening, um, you know, these are out of our control, obviously, but how you respond to them is what is so important. And that's the part that's not out of your control and that I really want you to think about because the more calm that you can be, so when you're when you're responding to things like, okay, we're going to figure this out, maybe do some deep breathing, communicate with your team, the less your brain is going to go into that reactive HPA axis, which is then not only bad for your body, but the entire set or the entire post process. Um, A huge vision with no budget, that's a really frustrating one. and, And that's something where you decided to take the job. So I think knowing that is kind of within your control, even though you're not budgeting. So be very careful what you say yes to, because then you could get that stress response activated constantly. And I think we take a lot of things out of financial fear when they may or may not be the right project for us ultimately. 
And the last one is taking on too much responsibility and not delegating. This is a huge trap and this is within your control. And again, not delegating is one of the worst things that you can do for your own level of stress. So you want to make sure that you are really utilizing your team as a good leader at whatever level you're at so that you can remain as calm and your brain can go into the most creative state possible. Okay, here we go. So what this is where we get into the meat and the bulk of what really creates success. And what I would love for you to think about is your daily rituals, because these daily rituals are what make success sticky and, and really um, give you the most optimum functioning for your situation, your body and your brain, so that then you can deliver your very, very best on set or in your project or in your post house or as an editor or colorist, whatever your role is. So the first thing is let's think about what your current self-care routine is. And I want you to make this self-care routine your most important thing that you do for yourself every single day. And what's really critical about this is that production is not going to worry about your personal health. And, you know, the jobs are not going to worry about it. And, and I've seen so many filmmakers that get injured or are miserable because they're just feeling so lousy. And so I want you to take a stand for your own health and by creating this daily ritual that creates success for your body. So the greatest thing about it is that it boosts your energy, your internal joy, and your health overall. Um, oops, sorry, I had a little, okay. Um, it builds resilience, and that's huge, because the more resilient you are, the less stress impacts you overall. It creates amazing relationships, and if you're happy in your relationships, not only in your personal life, but on set, then it's going to be effortless and fun to go to work every day. And when that happens, that's just an even more giant ripple effect for your team. So you're going to be working with the same team. You guys are just going to be like on autopilot, efficient, having fun. You know, that's what work is meant to be. And I think sometimes we lose sight of that because we're just we go down a rabbit hole of stress and then really allow that to impact the way that we behave and treat other people and then we get ourselves into more trouble. So remember the happy, joyful, healthy person is attracting more work because your energy precedes you wherever you go. And habit stacking is something that I just want to get into here. And again, I'm just scratching the surface given time because I want to make sure to leave time for you all for questions, for comments, to hear from you. And so habit stacking, let me just get into it in 30 seconds. Melissa Ming Foys, who's a wonderful researching psychologist, looked at ways to have people stick with their routines and actually commit to them over time. And one of the biggest things that she researched was habit stacking. So let's take something like brushing your teeth. You brush your teeth every single day, at least twice a day, some people three times after lunch. And you really notice, I would bet, if you didn't or you forgot to brush your teeth because your mouth just feels off. It, it feels bad. You know, you're, you're just thinking, oh my gosh, I need gum, right? So one of the things and the, the secrets to habit stacking is you take something like brushing your teeth and then you add an additional habit that you want to do as part of your self-care routine on top of that. So for example, I'm brushing my teeth and let's say that I want to incorporate stretching right after that, okay, as part of my morning routine because stretching is so good for my posture, it helps flexibility, it helps me prevent injury, all these wonderful things. So then I would immediately go get the yoga mat out and start stretching. And let's say that you did that for five minutes, okay, and maybe two minutes on a really early morning. But just by adding that one habit and stacking it 
on top of something that you're already doing, you are creating a success loop in your brain to continue that habit. And so the trick here is not to stack too many habits on top of each other because then you get frustrated and if you forgot one, then your brain becomes very negative. So just do one and when you have that habit stack perfected, then you can stack on another one and so on. Okay, and so whenever you show up as your best version, that is my goal for all of us. For me, this is something I strive for, is to really show up as my best version every single day, the best version that people can count on. Okay, so I love this Buddhist quote, um, what you think you become, what, what you feel you attract, and what you imagine you create. And think about this for just one minute. So if you are negative, oh my gosh, I haven't worked in four months, no work's coming in, you know, it's really slow, the writers might strike, what if that happens? Think about what you're putting out there and what you're putting out there to attract more of is negativity. And then the more negativity that you create, the less people want to be around you because all of a sudden you're toxic and negative. And it's also that your your brain gets out of its most creative state because it's gone down into this very negative space. So we don't want to we don't want to be negative people we want to be stress warriors and so i want you to think about this i love this uh photo it's or this gif where it's putting on whatever a stress warrior looks like to you so that you will be resilient and do things that are self-protective against stress and really keep all of this awfulness away from your body so that you can be an incredibly successful filmmaker. So the first thing, the first strategy, and now we're gonna get into the meat of the strategies here. So uh, hang tight with me, and if you would be willing to participate, I would love to have you do a little bit of deep breathing. And so we're gonna start there because meditation If you do nothing else, meditation, which is quieting the mind and really um, getting into a Zen zone of relaxation has so many huge health benefits that if you do nothing else from, from, you know, to care for yourself, um, please consider meditating. So, in order to get set up for meditation, and you can do this anytime on set, let's just sit tall here, and we're just gonna do one minute of deep breathing because we have very little time. But I will be doing more of all of the, this in a course that I have coming out soon on Filmmakers Academy. So at this point, I would like you to really put one hand on your heart center and one hand on your belly and just take in, this is um, a parasympathetic response. It gets the brain into parasympathetic mode. And just take a really big deep breath, close your eyes, and then hold, and then breathe out. And you can either let it go, like you're blowing out a candle. You can sigh and do a And I would like you to do three of these in a row. So let's do another one. Here we go. And one more. Again, really deep into your belly. Nice, big, deep breath. And let it all go. Now, I don't know about you, but just after those three really deep breaths, I can feel my shoulders relax. I feel my voice getting a little bit deeper. My body just goes into instant relax mode. And this, it's amazing how fast that happens. And so when you are in a particularly triggering situation on set, Don't forget that your breath goes with you wherever you are, and please feel free to advocate for yourself 
with this deep breathing technique. So meditation is incredible because it makes you feel energized. It oxygenates your cells, releases tension, improves your attention span and efficiency. And I think the most important thing that it does is to really maximize creativity um, so that when everything is going wrong, and you, you're just up against it with some horrible storm that's come in, you can much qu more quickly figure out how to pivot and what to do to save the day because you can't get all your setups on set, let's say if you're shooting. And I know I'm using a lot of cinematography examples here <laughs> uh, because I'm married to a cinematographer, but I will try to put post examples in there too. Um, but but whatever is happening that is hugely stressful, just taking a minute and taking that brain break to do deep breathing m will make a huge difference for you in whatever situation you're in. There's a Insight Timer is an amazing app, and I can only recommend um, that if you are into using apps, Insight Timer is fantastic. They have a lot of guided meditations, and I think that you'll really... Um, enjoy that. And you could also become a member, but it is free. So check out the Insight Timer. It looks like a giant singing bowl. Okay, I need to zip along here because I am realizing that time flies when you're having fun talking about stress. So the second strategy here is has to do with energy. And I love energy. I'm a Reiki master. Um, for those of you that don't know, Reiki is really about kind of realigning energy and relaxation, getting rid of stress. It improves sleep. It's, it's one of those techniques that's done on a massage table and it's just so, so powerful. So um, we are energetic beings. I think that we don't think about this too often. Every one of our atoms are absorbing and releasing energy all the time, and we're made up of a lot of atoms. And so in the rebalancing, energy is given off and energy is absorbed. So what I can I could talk about for 45 minutes just about energy, but what I could say in about two minutes is to be aware of your energy. Physical energy is really easy to, you know, if you have a lot of energy or if you're not feeling so well, maybe you're energy drained. But we also have mental energy. And this is how quickly we're thinking, you know, is our brain firing a million miles an hour? Or are we feeling brain fog because we're exhausted because we've exhausted our adrenal glands? So, and we've been in that chronic stress mode too long. So really pay attention to your mental energy because that is where a lot of stress originates. Then we have emotional energy. If you're riding the roller coaster of emotion on set, you may become very physically exhausted because of all of this emotional energy around you. You know, it's like a hive or if somebody has been very negative, they may have drained your energy. We have spiritual energy where we can get filled up after doing a spiritual practice. And we have a boundary layer, which is kind of the outer part of our energy. Some people refer it to it as the aura. And this boundary layer is what precedes us. So when you walk into a room and you know how you meet people and you think, wow, they're so positive and they're so powerful, that is their boundary layer energy that is what is noticed before you even open your mouth or say anything. And we have a chakra system in our bodies that are our energy centers. And just to touch on this for 30 seconds, again, I could go on and on, but our chakras can become misaligned. And this is what Reiki is so great for, is that it aligns these energy centers, it gets them spinning in the right direction, so that we feel feel really great within our bodies because our energy 
is aligned and maximally functioning. So what I would like you to pay attention to, and if there's one takeaway from energy, it's really notice what drains your energy and notice what boosts your energy. And the first thing, knowledge is, is power, is awareness. And from there, then you can take steps to do other energy work and really help yourself uh, move forward for greater success. Okay, just one word on stretching and exercise. You all are doing it, so I don't need to say anything about it. So congratulations, because I know that you're coping with stress, with exercise. That is amazing. It's a wonderful way to help prevent injury. It improves blood flow to your brain, prevents age-related memory loss. I mean, there's so many benefits to exercise decreases your stress level and associated hormones. And what what I love the most is really it makes our body more efficient at responding to stress. So again, if we're more efficient at responding, we're more resilient. So I didn't take stretching so seriously and I actually did something to my right knee. And, and because I think a lot of times we're really committed to exercise, but we might cheat the stretching. So don't do that because you can really get injured. Okay, strategy number four, hydration and nutrition. And the one thing that I would like to point out here is that look at how much water is in each of our organs. And what's so important about this is that water is a lubricant. It's there for enzymatic reactions. In order to function optimally, our bodies need a lot of water. And dehydrated people get sicker very quickly. So your immune system gets impacted when you're dehydrated. So um, we we all know, you know, eight, eight ounce glasses, which is about two liters. But when you really look at the amount that your brain especially is using in your blood, blood volume in the heart, the liver and the kidneys, in order to feel your best, you want to stay hydrated, which then boosts your confidence and creates more success. So make sure that you I always carry a water bottle wherever I go. Make sure you have your water bottle. Okay. Uh, Strategy number four on the food nutrition part. The only thing I want to say here is I love these photos for inspiration. We know that we need a lot of veggies, a lot of fruit. Eat the rainbow. Healthy fats. Don't forget avocado is amazing. And lean protein. Now, one word on nutrition, because I don't think we think about this so often, but a lot of people have food allergies or food sensitivity that could really impact how your body is functioning and how it's absorbing uh, nutrients and minerals. And so if your body is giving you the signal that you are not feeling good, you really need to maybe get some allergy testing or food sensitivity testing done. And also remember that the gut brain connection is fierce. And so the gut is our second brain. So that's it um, for nutrition and hydration. I really just wanted to inspire you to pick really healthy choices and pack your food so that you can control what you're eating when you're at work. Okay, gratitude practice. This is our our fifth strategy. And this is so important. Um, actionable with pen and paper, writing gratitude down. Just think of all the things that you can possibly be grateful for. Translate that over to the set by uh, because it creates such a ripple effect with lasting happiness. It expands your worldview and random acts of kindness are so amazing to do in your work environment. So you know, when a um, somebody that you're working with helps you out, let them know how and why that helped you. You know, thank them and, and let them know the PA that's coming in to give you something. Hey, that really helped me so much today and thank you so much. And, and how hard they're working and how much you appreciate them. I got a letter today of gratitude from one of our members, Zig. And Zig just said, Lydia, I'm so grateful to you and Shane. You've changed my life. 
you know, for the better in so many countless ways. And I'm practicing my gratitude. And I just wanted to let you know. And I am telling you, I, it made my whole day to hear from Zig and Zig. Thank you so much. And so it really, it's the little teeny things that make the greatest difference. And lastly, I snuck this in, even though I know I said five, but I, I just want to say one word about sleep, because sleep is the one thing as a filmmaker that I want you to advocate for, because so much of your sleep is taken away with crazy schedules going from days to nights. And let's say that you're shooting a 12 to a 14 hour day and then you have an hour commute. That leaves very little time to wind down and to get your high quality sleep. So seven to nine hours are critical every night. Um, I don't know if we really think about sleep so much and the health protective benefits of it in terms of washing away the, the toxins in our brain and really setting us up to prevent strokes and, and heart attacks, cardiovascular um, problems with memory and type 2 diabetes. And, and, you know, there's a real rise in type 2 diabetes going on. And that is because people sleep is being sacrificed. So... Sleep gives you effective decision making, makes you a better leader, and helps with impulse control. And this is your greatest weapon for success. So high quality sleep, what I do is I take my airplane etiquette and I bring it into my bedroom, meaning I have ear earplugs in, I've got eye shades, I have my sound machine, whatever it is that will help you get a solid sleep that is so important is one of your stress warrior strategies because lack of sleep gets that HPA axis firing off and then in an area where you don't want to be. So lastly, I just want to let you know about what we have going on at Filmmakers Academy. If you would like to find us and join us, we would love to have you. I have a wellness course coming out this summer. We're the number one resource platform for filmmakers. We have over 800 hours of content from directing to cinematographer. We do have some color correction and editorial. We're hoping to build that out more. And I think the greatest thing is our community of filmmakers from around the world. And we even have an app now that you can take on set with you if you want to reference things. So um, today, for being here, um, I am so thrilled that, that you can get a discount of 20%. Just put in L-A-P-P-G-20. And lastly, this is the sunset from my village where I grew up, the village of Aurora in upstate New York. This is my zen. I look at this when I just want to relax and de-stress. And I want to thank you so much for your gracious listening. And it was a, a real pleasure to be here. And now I want to hear from you all. So if anybody has questions, please throw them my way. Okay, we have one um, from Laura. Um, what are some good ways to create boundaries between work and personal for those of us still working from home? That's a great question. That's a great question, Laura. And thank you so much for, for that and for being here. How are you? Um, so I think what I do is um, I really try to be vigilant about time. And I know that work can creep in. So I think this is where your routine comes in. It's very tempting when you work from home to just hop on the computer first thing in the morning and answer all your emails and do everything. Okay, I know that filmmakers are going to do that. But if you could avoid that until after your morning routine is in place, do that morning routine then you hit work hard, you're more efficient. Um, the other thing I do is I work from home a lot and I try to take a midday break. And whether that's getting out in nature, just something to reset my brain. And lastly, um, when work is finished, it's finished. And you have to be vigilant about this. And I, am, I have a wind down routine when I leave work. I then enter my home. And I act as though, I mean, some people like go outside and come back in again, whatever it takes. But I think it's really 
really being so mindful and saying, okay, that's it. I'm done with work. And I, I really mean it. I'm sorry. I've got a bug here in my room. I really mean it. So I hope that helps. Um, but the, the stricter routines, the routine, the better. Love that. I absolutely, I mean, I'm, I'm living that as well, Laura. So, um, yeah, we could we could all use a little help in that area. Um, so before we um, sign off, because uh, I have you here, so I want to grab every little moment. Can you go through your wellness kit? I can, and I'm so excited about that. So I have a little shiny wellness kit, and I don't have time to go into all of it, but I'll just share with you this goes wherever I go. So I am never caught without anything. And so inside my wellness kit, I have some electrolytes. I have my supplements, my probiotics, my vitamins, my turmeric that I take every day. I have digestive enzymes because I do have an allergy to garlic of all things. So if I eat garlic, this helps my body not react. Um, I have my trace minerals because we don't get enough minerals from the soil anymore. And so these are amazing. And I just pop those in my water bottle. I have uh, liquid B12 because I need extra B. And so this is so great for an energy boost, especially when you're on set. I have, I, I go everywhere with my essential oils and I got myself a little self-care kit of oils. I have my crystals um, from Reiki. I use crystals, and so my crystals go everywhere. <clears throat> then I have a protein bar, and I have white sage smudge spray um, that just, if I'm around somebody toxic or negative, I get my spray out as <laughs> soon as that person's gone, and I'm like, okay, that energy is not sticking to me. Um, then I have a grounding oil that I love that smells good. Um, and my mask, my eye shades just in case. And what is the last thing? Oh, my earplugs I put in here. So I hope that that, um, and then I, I keep a little bit of gum. But that way, wherever I am, I have all my essentials with me in my kit you can also do a little backpack if you want to take that with you, if that works better to set. Um, whatever works best. And the last thing I want to talk about are these. And these sport hydration tablets have very little sugar. And they're so much better for you than Gatorade. And how many times on, are we sucking down Gatorade on set? And so these, you just pop the little tablet, hikers use these, into your water bottle and you get all the electrolytes and it tastes amazing. There's a caffeinated version and a non-caffeine and it's called NUN, N-U-U-N. Um, you can get them either on Amazon or any sort of pharmacy, you know, like a Walgreens or whatever, but they work like a million bucks. My doctor told me about those because he's a big hiker and he can't stand that people are drinking so much Gatorade. And so he said, you know, this is a great alternative. So there it is. Aww. My love love kid. You are good. You are so fast. And as you were doing that, uh, a question came in. So let me uh, throw this one at you real quick. Um, okay, what can you advise us to do or how to cope if we have a number of very negative circumstances happen to us that are out of our control? It seems that it is a never-ending cascade and I can't get out of this spiral of truly difficult events and situations that are happening, some simultaneously and some that compound each other. Okay, so you all can hear me, right? Because I heard that my, my okay. Um, I would say that's very difficult when you have a lot of compounding negative, and I think it's, it's really how to respond. Um, your response is everything. So statements like, I am trying my hardest and doing my best, and um, I certainly have room to grow and to learn more, but I think a lot of times people need to be reminded that, you know what, we are, we're doing our best. We're trying our hardest and the circumstances are other than we wish that they would be. And another thing is let me regroup with my team. Let us come up with a different solution that might be better. And I think um, with negativity, it's really almost internal self-talk 
to cancel clear is something that I say a lot so that I'm not taking it on. Like if somebody is just really being grumbly and nasty, I'm like, just Lydia, don't, don't take it on because it's really not yours. It's their coping very badly in a particular situation and they're taking it out on you. And I think it's really trying to, to get that perspective for yourself. Sometimes you just need to walk away for a moment and say, would you excuse me for a minute? I just need to really think about this problem or take a moment and I will be back. And it's okay at work when everybody's like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's okay to take a minute because sometimes your deep breath, you know, maybe you do your three, three breaths in a row. You will come back with a better solution if you take a moment and hold people off. And that's okay. Like you have permission to do that. Because I think in this quick world, people want instant answers. And sometimes, you know, that's not possible. It takes some thought and brain processing. I'm telling you, Lydia, I wish I could put you in my pocket and take you with me everywhere I need to go. Because I love your your energy and you're so positive and you're um very inspirational. And we really need that. I think at the beginning of the year, that that is what we need. And I thank you so, so very much. Um, I get, I'm seeing all these people with such positive things. They really got so much out of this. It is going to be on our YouTube channel. Um, it will be edited and we'll put it on our YouTube channel in a few weeks. So uh, make sure you sign up and uh, you will be able to watch it, do some of the exercises, watch it again. And just a huge thank you from Woody and myself and all of our members for taking the time to be here with us. And don't forget about the um, code LAPPG20 at Filmmakers Academy. And um, thank you all so, so yeah. much. It was honestly my pure joy to be here with you all. And thank you for the kind words and participation. It means so much to me and I hope to see you so yes, thank you let's have something in person one of these days so let's, yes. let's try to make that happen this year if we can and uh, everybody we will see you next month keep an eye on your inbox you'll be getting details and uh so don't uh don't miss that and if you want to catch up on past meetings, uh, we currently have, we just put up our December meeting, uh, and that was with the Cinema Audio Society. Um, so in case you missed it, head to our YouTube channel. Um, we um, brought in, I think it was four re-recording mixers, and we had Carol Urban do an amazing mo job moderating. And uh, together, they talked about... Um, various workflows, social dynamics, and project implications related to mixing alone uh, versus mixing in a team. So it was a really interesting um, interesting discussion. We got to find out a lot about um, how uh, you negotiate projects, about dividing duties, and also um, how you navigate dynamics in the mix room. So that was very cool. And I recommend you check that out. And then when you are on a YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and click the bell, and then you will be notified when uh, new videos drop. And be sure to connect with us. We're on Facebook, Instagram. We're on Twitter and LinkedIn. Use the hashtag LAPPG if people are still doing that. I'm not so sure. I'm a little uh, behind the times, I think. But definitely check, check us out on all of those. And a big thank you to all of our partners, um, AJA at the Platinum Level. At the gold level, we have Adobe, Blackmagic Design, OWC, Zeiss, Frame.io. And at the silver level, we have Isotope, SGO, Media Silo by Shift Media, Small HD, and Teradeck. And it takes a village. So we have uh, lots of other supporters that help us get the word out about our meetings. And we thank them as well. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Take care.